more than 9.4 million confirmed cases of coronavirus. California, Florida, and Texas breaking records for new cases in a single day. COVID-19 contains the RNA it uses to reproduce, surrounded by an outer layer called the capsid. However, it needs another living organism called the host in order to reproduce. It will sit on surfaces or even stay in the air for hours, waiting for the unsuspected person to breathe it in or touch their face. Then, it uses the spike proteins on the outside of it as a key that attaches to ACE2. After attaching to the cell, it can inject its RNA inside of it. The cell will then start producing copies of the virus until it bursts from all the viruses inside it. These viruses will then go on to other cells and repeat the process. Cells like T cells and neutrophils will try to destroy infected cells, foiling the virus's plans. However, COVID-19 can attack them, causing them to destroy healthy cells instead. There are some different types of vaccines that are currently being developed. Here are just a few. Live vaccines use a weakened form of the virus that will cause an immune response while not causing disease. These are often the most effective vaccines, but they can be dangerous for people with weak immune systems. Inactivated vaccines use a killed form of the virus in order to cause an immune response to produce antibodies without actually causing infection. A COVID-19 subunit vaccine may contain the spike protein, the part that attaches to your cells and triggers your immune system, while not containing the RNA that it would have injected into the cell. Say that every day, P more people get the virus. We can model the situation with the equation Y equals P times X plus one. Unfortunately, the number of cases does not increase at a constant rate. This is because of something called the r naught, or the number of people someone with the virus is likely to infect. This means that each day, instead of adding a certain constant p, we are actually adding the number of cases multiplied by the r naught. We can represent this with the equation y is equal to 1 plus the r naught to the power of x. But there's still something wrong here. This function actually exceeds its outbound, meaning that it never slows down. We know that in reality, the number of people that a person infects is not necessarily the number of new cases that that person causes. If someone is reinfected, it won't actually increase the number of cases. And as the number of cases increases, more people are reinfected. So, while the number of infected people increases exponentially, the number of people who actually create a new case decreases arithmetically. We get something called a logistic graph. This graph starts out exponentially with an increasing slope, but after it reaches a point called the inflection point, it becomes logarithmic with a decreasing slope. Using something called an SIR model, which categorizes everyone into either susceptible, infected, or removed, we can simulate a mini outbreak and see how it spreads over time. A logistic graph appears in this model as well. With these graphs and models, we can predict where an outbreak will happen and when the spread will finally slow down. This can help us take preventative measures that can save lives. My name is Andrew. Thanks for watching.